Hello YouTubers and uh, welcome back to another um, <coughs> tutorial basics into um, having a look at how I built my DIY analog synthesizer. Um, this is just a small update to the part where we discuss the exponential converter which basically takes a linear voltage and comes into here, into one end here, into this op amp here and by the time it pops out here and goes into this part here which is the actual the saw core oscillator we get an exponential musical pitch so um, as I said I've discussed that in the first part now this one here this particular schematic here is taken from the Jupiter 8 VCO again it's not strictly a Jupiter 8 VCO schematic this is used quite a few through a quite a few different um, Roland synthesizers you actually see part of this actually used in the DCO of the uh, the Juno 6 and 60 series and I think possibly the 106 but I haven't seen the 106 schematic so don't quote me upon that. Um, if we have a look at this schematic here, this was a cleaned up version and it was done by a guy called Jack. I can't quite read the name here, but if you look in the um, part, the part two, uh, you will see a link to muffwiggler.com where the guy um, actually, you, you'll see this circuit diagram. There's quite a few pages on that, which I suggest you probably give a good read. Uh, there's just a couple of amendments I just wanted to kind of go through with you. Uh, for instance, uh, if we look on this schematic here, which is the original one, we have these um, we have these particular uh, resistors here. We have R13, R14, and R15, and we are using the CA3046, which is a transistor array that looks like so. Let's have a quick butchers at that. Now. If we, what we can do is sub that transistor pair, which is within the CA3046, and we can go for something called the 318, LS318, which is basically a matched transistor pair. I want to say they're matched. I think what it is is something to do with how closely the, uh, I, can't, I can't think if it's the, if it's the voltage base emitter current or something like that. Don't quite know what I'm talking about on this part. When I say I don't know what I'm talking about, I mean I, I can't find the exact um, correct term for which it is matched, but they're supposed to be a lot closely matched here than they would be in the CA3046. Now, the LS318 will look something like this, and this is known as I think it's a T080 um, CAN as opposed to a normal transistor, which is a TO. I think this is a TO, they call this a TO dash TO dash 92 case. So, just in case you're having a look at the web and you're trying to search it, and I think these are available from um, and they are available from linear system. Now, this isn't exactly a, a LS318, but the LS318 will look something like this. So, you will have I think you'll either have six legs or five legs. I don't know if the, the actual emitters are actually linked. So, it's two transistors in a sort of old school looking, uh, quite late 70s uh, tin can, right? Um, so yeah, so basically. On this, if we look at this schematic here, I've put an X through this capacitor. Now, reading through the thread, I actually discovered that you, if you're using something like a modern op amp, like say the 4558 or something like the TL0720 stroke the uh, 082, or even something like a precision, something like a, um, uh, I think it's a linear tech operational amplifier or even something like the AD, AD series, you don't need this uh, capacitor in here. So we can, because apparently they have it, it's internally built in. Um, also, if you have a quick look over here, I've put this here, which is, I've discovered yesterday, we can give this um, a couple of different um, FM inputs. So we can get another, say for instance, another oscillator, or a dedicated FM oscillator, and we can, we can input FM frequency modulation. So where we have uh, a, a oscillator in, in the audio range, doing frequency modulation. Now if we come into this part of the op amp, which is going to be as per as I've built it, 
and we'll say that's going to be pin 6, 5, and that's going to be the output. Well, we, this this will be the part where we have we will be basically setting our volt per oc no sorry this will be where we be setting our width our frequency range width and what I mean by that say for instance we have our keyboard here. What we will basically do is vary vary the pitch so we can say this side we'll say that this is the top of our keyboard this will be max and this will be the minimum so what we need to when we calibrate the VCO we have the initial tune which we could do by, by using another synthesizer or a kind of another digital tuning or some kind of frequency generator and we can check that out on the scope and we will set our minimum frequency and say in this case we wanted to say this was we could call this say C0 we would have this at about 16.4 about 16.4 Hertz and then we could make say the end of the keyboard up here we could make this something really small like say I don't know 300 Hertz not ideal that we'd want to do that, but we could set that. So we have that trimmer up here to set that VCO width, or we could take this to something like, I don't know, just two, two point, I can't think of the exact figure, kilohertz, which is probably about, say, if we was churning again, if we, I, I try and work with the key of C, I mean, some people go for A, so we'll say we're going in the, uh, the key of C, this is about C, about C9 or something, which is plenty of um, plenty of range, to be honest with you. So we can actually vary that, so we could make it smaller or bigger by that tuning bar. Um, this small potentiometer we put in here, which is a variable resistor, or stroke trimmer, which should look something like this. You get some which look like these. You even get some old school ones like this. I ripped this out of an old 1970s um, Pioneer cassette deck. I like these because you're quite very hands on. You don't need to use screwdrivers with these. You can do these with your fingers as you're calibrating. So, yeah, so, so basically, we can set the, we will set the VCO width with this one here, which, if we go over to the schematic, is here right here again I just wanted to point out personally I would change this VR2 to 20 about 22 between 22 and 50k to get it right it's not very good at 2k you don't get much range at all um, anyway if we look over here on this op amp if we plop a resistor in if we plop a resistor in here we can input a another oscillator to give us exponential FM. If we look on the other side of that op amp, I'm just going to call this B. This we, we're going to assume this is a dual op amp where we've only got basically we have two op amps inside there, and then we'll we will have another op amp on this side, which is going to be A uh, pin two pin 3 and output pin 1 so if we come over to the A side we'll still have a capacitor in here which we could you could either have it 1 1 nanofarads or probably something like a 10 nanofarads now ideally in this capacitor here if you can try and try and make this um, something which is known as a the dielectric material inside it needs to be something known as C0G or NP0. Now basically what these um, capacitors dielectric will do will give you very 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 low um, temperature drift over time and helping keep your oscillator and your frequency timing and your exponential converter stable but if we go into this part here and we put another resistor, I'm going to put 
put a question mark on that. We can have linear. We can have linear FM. So let's go back to the actual schematic where we can see it drawn a lot nicer than I've done it. So here, so where we have our CVs in, we can have an exponential FM in, frequency modulation in, and if we go here, we can have linear frequency modulation. Now the reason why I've put question marks here is because we could, I basically I've looked at other um, VCO schematics and seen where their FM inputs are, and I've basically experimented it, experimented with it on my synthesizer and seen that it's worked, but it, it will very much depend on the control voltage that, um, from your from your oscillator or wherever you're using as your ex, your your FM source, which will determine the size of your resistor. Because you could have say the prescribed say oh we gave for hundred k, which is quite a standard size that we can see here prescribed value. You could find that well that's actually done absolutely nothing. I can't hear anything because you've got too way too much resistance. Hence you're not getting you're not you're, you're not hearing a, any effect. So we can either two options. If we're thinking of just experimenting, you could go for just plop in different size resistors till you find the right one. Maybe if you want to solder and you don't want to commit to a specific size, you want to be able to vary that. You want to go for maybe um, a trimmer, a variable trimmer, so you can tweak it to taste. And uh, yeah, boom, there you go. Right, um, I should be back at some point with another video, uh, basics tutorial sort of running you through with you the um some more parts on the oscillators anyway thank you for watching please uh, leave comments uh, any questions you need to ask leave them and share and subscribe if you can and i'll catch you all soon thank you for watching bye bye